What's up, everybody? Camera Work Podcast, episode 16. We have two people here with us today. We have Ray Tamara, who is the co-host, and he's back because he wasn't here last week. Hello, Ray. Hey, what's going on? Thanks for checking in, and uh, hopefully you enjoy the show. And we also have Soul Brother, who is a photographer and a friend of mine. Hey, hello. Right. Now, Soul Brother is interesting because I don't even really know his real name. Oh, like, I'll, I'll, I think I'll I know your first name. I'll I'm, actually let it out. Okay, I'm going to tell you what I think your first name is, and you tell me if that is truly your first name, okay? Go ahead, take a stab at it. All right. I think your first name is Donald. My first name is Donald. Ah, look at that. All right, good, good. And do you use a last name? No, I. you know what? Funny enough, I do because I switched from my photo agency, and um, this one, they don't. they don't do that. They don't. I can't hide. Right. Well, what was the reason for you um, branding yourself as Soul Brother rather than... Well, what is the last name then, Donald? Well, my, my, my birth name was Donald Anthony Trail. Donald Trail. Yeah, okay. Donald Trail. So what was the reason that you didn't just go with Donald Trail from day one and that you were sending pictures out under the name Soul Brother? Well, because I before I did photography as a working profession, I had a clothing business called Soul Brothers. So I got dubbed with, I kind of got dubbed with the name Soul before I even really started the business. So it was a name that stuck with me. So even then afterwards, it was still a name that I just used. Right. And what are you introducing yourself as most of the time now? Do you Um, say Donald when you show up at a gig or do you say Soul? Well, I still go with Soul because it's funny because to me, only people that our family members say Donald. So if you called me up on the phone and was like, hey, Donald, I'm like, you're not a family member. Who is this? Right. So it, it, there's always some of those awkwardness. And it's, it's funny because that happened to me the other day. And I was just like, uh, hello. <laughs> right. Do I know this person? Yeah. And, right. you know, but it, it it's OK. I'm kind of getting slowly right. used to it. Right. Now, I actually met you through Ray because you were friends with Ray before you were friends with me. Right. And Ray was not here last week because he was on vacation, which is pretty rare for Ray because Ray works a lot. Right. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, luckily, um, the business is good and I can afford vacation. And I went to Curacao, which is part of the ABC Islands. It's uh, Aruba, Bonaire and Curacao. Um, I hiked. I did the pool thing. Um, ate. Uh, drove a stick shift. The first time I've driven a stick shift in like 15 years, driving through hills, stuff like that. And I think that for me, it just allows me to reset and to, um, you know, recharge my creative juices. Right. Now, you don't bring a camera when you go on a trip like this? Uh, no, no, I don't. Because I think that, I mean, I get so, uh, what is it? I get so anal about getting a good picture that I just lose sight of it being a vacation. And at the end of the day, I like to remember stuff. I like to do stuff. Like there was a commercial about Facebook and there was a, a girl who was like, Oh, my parents only have two friends. They're so, they're so, um, they're, so, they're sad. so sad. And then her parents are out there like riding yeah. bikes and oh, riding horses. I know, I know that commercial. And she was <laughs> like, Oh, I wonder if they're okay. Yeah. And she's sitting at home. And, and that's why I, I don't want to be at home looking at a computer. I just want to be out there doing stuff and then I can remember it in my head. It'll be a memory that I have for myself. I have pictures of myself at the top of the highest mountain in Curacao, which isn't that high, but I was, I did it. And uh, right. I think it. the problem too, you actually went with a group of people, correct? Uh-huh. And I think one of the problems that happens though is like, if you pull out a camera and you try to take a few pictures of everybody in the boat, the next thing you know, you're working the gig. Everybody's like, take a okay. picture of this. Right. Take a picture okay. of that, yeah. right? That, that's, <laughs> no, no, I, I got to yeah. jump in on that. I, I hate that fact. And for because of that fact, when I go to family functions, I don't bring a camera. Right. And I have people who invite me to a function because they want me to bring a camera. And I right. don't bring a camera because right. if I'm invited to the function, I'm invited. Right. You don't want to work. Exactly. Right. And what happens with me, with my family, and it's funny because... I'll have in my mind that I want to do a picture. Like we had my niece, I don't know, she's probably three, I guess. It was her birthday party at this Dave and Buster's in Times Square. So I, I said, okay, I'll bring my camera. I brought the Leica because it's nice and small, but I brought a flash. And I'm going to just take a picture of her alone, like a birthday portrait. But then when I go to shoot it, it's like my mom jumps in, like, oh, take a picture of me with Bella. And then my sister jumps in. Then my other sister jumps in. And then I just kind of go like, uh, okay, I take those shots and I end up putting it away. And one of my sisters always says, like, well, you should not bail that quickly. Like, you should fight through and be like, 
look, guys, just chill a second. Let me get the shot I want to get, and then we can get the family pictures. But somehow, I don't know, it's just, I, I never like fighting, even professionally. Like, that's really why I don't do a lot of, like, arrivals and red carpet shoots and things where there's a lot of other photographers. I personally find it difficult to deal with the competition being right next to me and we're like trying to be assertive and fight for position and things like that. I mean, does either one of you have a problem with that? Because I'm not good at that. I'm just not. I'm not good with it in my family, I guess, and I'm not good at it on the street with other photographers. But I don't know. Ray, why don't you start? I mean, I mean, with that type of thing, then you have to be assertive because there's shots that are that are crucial and um you pretty much have to push your way to the top, like especially when working in packs. Um, you have to do Hail Marys and stuff like that. And I don't like doing that stuff. So the stuff that I get isn't, isn't, um, the best angle. And I get discouraged about that. And, um, I may, I may, you know, I just have to do the best I can and, um, decide again after the fact, should I continue doing this? Should I continue right. doing this? What do you this? do, I'm though? You, let's say, and sometimes at some of these events, some of the, the, well, for me, a big thing would be like the VH1 Awards. That's the kind of thing that I might shoot periodically, BET, uh, Hip Hop Honors, or whatever you call these things. And then they, they mark off the spots. You know, there'll be like little pieces of tape that says like Getty and Wire and Red Carpet Imagine. Arrivals. Yeah, like Red Carpet Arrival, events like that. And then you go there and then like some dude's in your spot. What's your technique for dealing with it? Just say, excuse me, you have to move out of my spot. And then if not, then you ask the, the publicist to come at it. And then um, uh, before I used to get so mad and I would put, physically put my hands on on you if you didn't, if you didn't want to cooperate. But I, that's not the that's, <laughs> that's not, not the right good. solution either. Right. So, you know, it's all whatever you decide to do. I probably would just move to another spot because I know I okay. can get a shot from third row from now, fourth see, row now from we're getting outside. Somewhere. But you see, but the, go go first. Uh, we call, we're calling you Soul, though. Okay, yeah, yeah. Soul. Yeah. I wouldn't re I wouldn't respond to you. Uh, but you see, that's that's the whole thing in terms of some people are insecure with their abilities. So with being insecure with their abilities, they want to one make sure that they have what they consider to be the prime shot prime spot for the shot and they have numerous things so i'm kind of in the realm of where ray is because if you're a photographer you can make a shot it might not necessarily be the shot you see but you can make a shot there's a lot of people who are in the photography business but they're not photographers right and we've talked about that idea a lot in the podcast and when i do that people get mad at me so Soul said it that time. Well, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Your, your people are going to be mad at me because I, I am against a lot of things because we, we are in a society where technology makes people appear to be smart, but they're not really. And one of the things about photography is that technology make people appear to be photographers, but they're not really because right. when you, have a camera that shoots, and I'll go on a low end of 10 frames per second. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? So you've gotten one out of 10 chances to get the photo. Right. It doesn't, it doesn't make, mean that you composed it and all of that stuff. So you figure you're doing 10 frames per second and the person in front of you for 15, 20 seconds. Right. You know what I mean? We're talking 30 to 40 images already. So. Right. But the thing is, is that you're correct in a sense that Almost anybody that I put on a red carpet with, you know, the 5D Mark III or the Nikon, you know, D4 can nail the shot today. I, really? I, well, see, I don't, I don't see, I don't think they, they nail the shot. They get a shot. They get a good shot. But then again, the thing that you see, all right, in the group of, I mean, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you get a shot, because if the shot sells, then that's what counts. See, that's so you have to, if the, you're making money on, on average shots, then all power is to you, and you can't, you can't knock that, because if you're making money, then it makes sense. Right, but the thing is, is that it depends on what your goal is. Is your goal when you get out there to make money or to take a great shot? And I know in a lot of my career, my goal has been to take a great photo at the expense of making more money, because I just never wanted to feel like I was just doing it like a machine or just by road. I wanted to shoot what I thought was interesting. And I know sometimes it costs me money, but I'm fine with that. But I don't think everybody is. But you agree, so let today yeah, anybody my, can get a shot that's going to suck. You're in the right my, place at the right like, time. As much as I love and respect Ray, 
I my goal will always be a great get a great shot, and I don't care in the aspect of selling it or not. One of the things that I I think people don't understand, and it happens in our business a lot. A lot of people sell stuff, right? But then again, I think technology changed things and the market and pricing and all of that stuff. So. A lot of things are published that has no business being published. Right. It has no business being published because when there was a shooting at 34th Street and there weren't a lot of people, a lot of photographers. This is the one that was uh, outside the Empire State Building? Uh, outside the Empire State Building. About six, eight months ago, I guess. The AP was servicing Instagram photos. Yeah, yeah, I remember that now. That's true. Yeah. So it like, and it doesn't like. Yeah, but you see, in a sense, again, there used to be an expression. F8 and be there. And what mm-hmm. that meant was, this was years ago, and what it meant was like, put your camera on F8 and be yeah. there. And the point of that expression was half of it was how you set the camera and half was being there. And today the amateurs are there with their Instagram cameras. And my problem with it isn't so much the idea of, oh, you know, Instagram is getting the news coverage. My problem is that the guy who shot that Instagram image now is not getting them. A- no, it's not that. It's that he's not getting the money that he should have got for that photo. Because like you said, AP pulls it off Instagram. They might not pay anything. No, they're not going to pay anything. They're yeah, not going to pay that's anything. That's really my problem is that that guy got ripped off for the money he should have got for what could have been a, a Well, then if, money. if that's the case, and I and it was it, like, first off, let me state this. I'm not a Facebooker. I'm not an Instagram. I, right. I, I, I do do that. I do share photos. Right. And if, if you... My following is fifteen to twenty people. Right. If you're not in my friend circle, right, then you're not getting then my you're not seeing it. Yeah, you're right. not seeing it. Right. And let's and let that's me do this pretty much. before we continue on this topic. Let me put you in perspective for people who don't know you. So, how do you describe yourself? What type of photographer are you? I'm a photographer. That that's not. I'm a photographer. You don't I've, put a name on it. No. No. Right. I, but, no, but but is it correct that most people would call what you do paparazzi, even though it's not paparazzi? But there's no term for like an event see, I'm not, shooter. I'm I'm not that. I'm not that because right. I'm. And I'll tell you why. Because I got corporate clients, right? And the corporate clients don't know that I do the street stuff, right? Okay, but let's try to run through. And I asked you earlier to like kind of make a list of what you shot in the past week. All right, so can you run through that list? I guess okay. it's here. I, yeah, I. So last and, and really week, quick, and you're like me. I actually make the list. You're like, I can't remember anything I shot last well, week. Well, <laughs> you know, we're jotting it down, and, and I'm going to show you. I'm why. the same way. Though people go to me like, what What have you been shooting? And I go, I don't remember. I just know what I'm shooting right okay, now see, today. All I right. Remember yesterday. The reason why, like, I constantly, constantly have a debate about this because perfect example. Last Friday was when Thursday was when Amanda Bynes got arrested. Okay. Okay. So right. Friday she did a perp walk. So now, right. perp walk. That's a news story. Right. So when do I stop being a paparazzi right. in terms of papping her coming in and out of court and right. become a news guy? Right, because the, the perp walk is set up. That's set up to be photographed. And it's set up and it's done for news purposes. Right. And then the, the problem, I've always said this, is that like the average person, if you say I'm, I'm a photographer, they go, oh, you paparazzi. And they say it because there's no other term. Like there's the terms portrait photographer, commercial photographer, pet photographer. But the only term anybody really knows is paparazzi. So... Anybody who shoots on the street, they think is a paparazzi, but they have to understand there's a difference between the guys who do hardcore paparazzi where they're shooting without permission, which I know Ray does pretty often and you do sometimes. And then there's these guys who are like, I guess you call them event shooters who shoot stuff with permission. They're on a list but, and they've got a spot but taped down. But there's so much different variations of, of photography. So right. that's why when people ask me, I'm a photographer. Right. Yes. Listen, today I might be a paparazzi. Right. To, I've done, I've worked on presidential campaigns. Right. You know, so then am I a paparazzi when I'm, right, when, when I'm, when I'm in New Hampshire shooting right. Mitt Romney, Rick Santorum, you know, and all of these other people? Right. I'm but, a news guy. But let's run through the week because um, okay. you have a list here. All Just right. tell us what have you done in the last seven, five days? Right? Okay. So last Friday was Amanda Bonds coming out of court. Saturday, I didn't really work and Sunday I didn't really work. I always okay. try to take off the weekend. Right. Um, but Sun, yeah, Sunday I did work. Because right. Anthony Weiner, he's running for mayor, okay. so he makes a stop by a church by my house. So I, there's no way I could not. But did you do have that. permission for that, or did you just go? Well, I went, but there, there's a lot of gray areas with stuff like that. It was a church, so I did have permission to enter the church and photograph okay. him. And, right. And matter of fact, one of the photographs was in the New York Post. Oh, so cool. It, it, you know. So it was credited on Donald or it credited? was credited on Donald. I'm, I'm, That's I'm over cool. at AP now. So AP doesn't, 
They don't have. There's no room for that. They're not slightest. messing with. No, well, I like to be called so. No, like, no, you're, you're no, fucking Donald. Yeah, and that's exactly, that. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, so I did that, and then the the Monday, which was Memorial Day, he was right. marching. So, but not only him. You had all of these local politicians that marched in a local Memorial Day, right? You know, Veterans March, and so I photographed all of them. So, right. so that Sunday, was Monday. What about? Did you shoot something Tuesday? Tuesday, I did the Spider Man set. Um, over on, on 7th Avenue. Oh, okay. Um, Wednesday. What, what did would, you get? Did you get him like any outfit and stuff? He was in the outfit staring off a building and then, um. Oh, that's cool. You want a Emma, 300 for that or what? Uh, 300. And then Emma, Emma Stone. Emma Stone was walking in the street like he was looking down at her and she was looking up at him. Right. And it's always funny how when you shoot something. Right. And what it appears to be on, on film. Oh, is, God, is it must be, yeah. It's two, it's two yeah. different things. Yeah, and two it might not things. even be him in a Spider-Man outfit but anyway. He, he, no, but he's, he, he mainly does. He does. I think yeah. you like him being tall and skinny. I think yeah. that's why they, because the dude's like 40 anyway, which makes no sense. He's the, oh, he's like the oldest Spider-Man. No. Yeah, no, he's, he's not, he's no, not 40. He's old. No, this no, is he's not kid. 40. I mean, but no, he's like no, 27, I think. No, this is a young kid. Well, I guess. Somebody Google his age. I'm telling you. Andrew Garfield. Yeah, he's young. He's, he's like 27. He's supposed to be in high school. I'm gonna look him up at some point. Well, no, I, I get, I, yeah, I guess we could go back and forth on that. Um, Wednesday, I was searching for a set, and then I bumped into Tom Hanks having lunch in, in Central Park. Right. So I he shot. was just sitting there, like, like man, he was. Listen, and the funny part of it is that no one recognized him because right. he's kind of different. He put on, he's doing a play in, in New York. He has York. a mustache. I he saw some a, pictures. He has a mustache. So that's yeah. what happened to me. I was walking by looking for the set and I was like, man, that guy looks like Tom Hanks. And then right. he's on the phone and I heard him talking. I was like, that is Tom Hanks. Did you say something to him? Oh, no, 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 no. How far I, away did you shoot that from? Um, it was one of the, it was the boat pond on the west side. So it was kind of small, but I, I used the 300. No, keep going, so. I, I use the 300. So, um, you know, I guess 250, 250 meters, you know. Right. But did he see you shooting at all? Well, eventually he did. Because right. I did it correctly. I, in, in certain situations, you're not supposed to be seen. Right. He was having lunch and you're, see, this is where, like, I'm a photographer. I'm capturing the moment. Right. He's not supposed to see me capturing the moment. Yeah, that's a so, different shot. So it, right. So that's why, you know, people want to say things, but I'm a photographer. I'm right. a fly on the wall. I'm well, not- but did you see, by the way, because you mentioned Amanda Bynes, this irked me so much. It, the, the, the way the news played up the clip was that she said to a photographer, you're an ugly black man. And that became the spin. But what I was looking at was something that aggravated me more than that. And what it was was she had this towel on her head, because I don't know, it seems to be her thing, because the wig's not ugly enough. She's got to put a towel on her head. And she's walking, and the thing's covering her face, and there's a whole bunch of photographers mm-hmm. following her to, like, this garage elevator. Yep. And the I one know the guy, whole entire story. who's and the black guy, he keeps moving it. You can yes. see in the video, yes. he's touching the cloth. He's trying to move it to get a shot of her face. And she tells him, stop once or twice. And then she says, like, you're ugly, you're an ugly black man. And again, the story became, oh, she's racist. But I just kept going, this guy should not be touching her. You but, don't touch anybody. Yeah, no, I, I know the individual, in, but no, and which is when, see, they tried to make that a story. Right. But there's something else that happened in the complete but video. But be- before that, do you, what, is the photographer right or wrong for no, touching her no, to move no. the cloth but, to get a better I, shot? But I don't, goes back to my definition of a photographer. Right. I don't, they're not, I, they consider themselves photographers, but they're not photographers. And right. see, this is the thing. But okay. before you say that, Ray, is he right or wrong for moving the cloth to get a better shot? I mean, you, it's a gray area because you can get, I mean, I've done the same thing and I get, I go to jail for that. So, uh, I, but have I'm you not, ever moved something on a celebrity yeah, like that? Yeah. I just, That's I've not done, right. No. <laughs> it's not right, but it's like, no. it's like if you're, if you're going to, if you're a celebrity and you have an umbrella and you're blocking the shot, Right. And you have the umbrella right in front of your face. Right. And it's frustrating. Right. And the frustration can be, cause you don't have to do that. But if you choose to do that, right. then somebody can pull that umbrella out of the yeah, way. Yeah, but you got a right every, to carry an umbrella. Every really action yeah. deserves yeah. a I mean, there's, there's that, reaction. that's the reaction. Right. Like if you're going to make it hard, then right. someone's going to react to that right. and it's going to make it hard for you. If you're going to make it hard for me, right. then I'm going to make it hard for you. Right. But so, I remember one time I was with you because uh, I forget why I was hanging out with you, but we were on the street and then um you were trying to get some like Mexican food or something over this. And then Tiffany Amber Thiessen walked by and you recognize her. You were there to try to get that set. I don't remember what the show was. White collar. White collar. Okay. And then I don't know how you recognize it, but you do. And then you start shooting and it was just what you said. A publicist came with her 
and opened an umbrella and we were like across the street though and it, it just ruined every shot. She was going to some museum. Remember that? Yeah. I mean, but it's like if, and we were doing the Cameron Diaz job and she wants to walk around with an umbrella. Right. It, it, there's only so much you get. If you're going to make it harder and harder and right. harder for someone, someone's right. just going to react and say, pull that umbrella see, out of the way. I could maybe see moving it from the publicist because they're so annoying when you've got some feet. Some but publicist. there's not a difference. Uh, to it, me, it, it is. It, you know that publicist, like, no, see, no, no pictures now. And but you're, you're, the, like, you're the same person you know, who don't, <laughs> doesn't want to shoot Beyonce because you're part of the system. Yes, that's me. But, but yes. It, you know, I'm not going to shoot her looking like He-Man. I'm sorry. I'm going to take a beautiful picture of Beyonce. But I would. But you I, were going to say some stuff, though. Where, where were you going? Because you were about to talk about that incident in particular. You said there's some stuff oh, going on with Amanda Bynes. The, the other part of it, when they say, when she said, you know, you're an ugly black guy. Right. They they commented, and she was like, no, I'm not, because he's an ugly white guy. Because if you see the video, there's a right. guy referred to as Smiley. Right. And he comes up, and he's all smiling right next to her face because he's doing video. He wasn't doing right. stills at that point. And she was just like, yeah, he's an ugly white guy. I'm not okay. racist. So you felt it wasn't racist what she no, said? No, it wasn't. Though. Like, yeah, okay. it, you know, I, this is the problem. I got many problems with a lot of things. Because this, <laughs> You're like no, me. <laughs> well, this is the thing. Like, when do you, when do you as a photographer become a part of the story? You're not supposed to be a part of the well, story. Well, that's why to me you don't touch, you don't move well, the that's why, you that, don't move the cloth. That's her not, right. If she wants not, to wear a thing like, on her head, she can wear it on her head. In my mindset, we're here to document stuff. And when right. you as an individual becomes part of what you meant, to, it's kind of like you're disrupting the image that you're supposed to get. Right. That's so how I feel about it. And if you want to do that, then, you know, do like I did. Get a studio and Ray shares the studio with me. You can get models here. You get celebrities. You can pose them all you want. You make them stand on one foot. You do whatever you want to do because it's your world. But when they're walking on the street, if this celebrity wants to carry an umbrella sideways or up over her head or blocking her face, that's her right. Everybody's got the right to put an umbrella wherever see, they want and without it being moved. See, uh, you can. these are your choices you make. You can walk with an umbrella. Right. Or you can ha and not have it block you, and people can take the picture like two miles away, banging it right. out, banging it out. But if you wanna, if you wanna drop the impeller right in front of you, then people are gonna be right next to you, yeah. trying to take the shot That's, right underneath right. the umbrella. Yeah. You don't have to move right. the umbrella. You don't have right. to, but you're gonna, your actions cause people to come closer and be more aggressive. Right. So if you're gonna, if you take, if you make the choice to cover yourself up and and uh, not give up the picture, right. then you're gonna have people. Right on you, trying to get that right. because that's what you took. That you made the decision to do. But those people do. don't have to move the umbrella. They, they don't have to move the umbrella. But, see, but you're also going to be. You're going to have a photographer right next to right. you. I, and right. see what I don't get mad. I get even because what happens right. is that then they have to shoot outside. Right. And when you have to shoot outside and you want me to comply, I'm not going to comply mm -hmm. because. And and that's what happened to Cameron Diaz because when she had to shoot outside, everybody was like, "We ain't moving," because right. you know, and yeah, on the movie they want the better angle. And shit. It's just like, no, right? You wasn't nice to us, so why why are we going to be nice right. to you? You're that's, on a public street. Yeah, that's that's and how. The funny thing is, you know, I've shot a lot of music videos, and the funny thing is, is that like sometimes the crew can be sort of rude in the sense that they're blocking the street, and uh, most people who try to walk by the street. They're so apologetic. It's like they really think for a minute that like the movie they, they, has the right to yeah, be there. And the yeah. movie would be like, oh, you can't walk. You got to cross the street. Yeah. They're like, oh, oh, we're sorry. We didn't know. Yeah, well, it, it, and in reality, you could, you could, if you chose, be like, dude, I'm walking right across the street. I don't have to turn around because you're filming a movie. It's a courtesy I'm probably going to extend to you, but, but don't say it to me in a way that I'm required to do this. But I, we just kind of respond to authority figures. Like if somebody goes, oh, you got to cross the street. Yeah, no, I, uh, we go, know, okay. But in reality, I, you really don't have to. That. On my way here, I stopped by a set. That's why I was late. And the right. PA came to me and he was like, you're in the eye line. And I was just like, listen, dude, if an actor or an actress right. got a problem with me in their eye line, they right. need to quit. Yeah. I'm like, the crew's in the eye line. Right. You're in the eye line. Right. So if you can't focus on your job, you need to quit. Right. Right. So do not, and, and, yeah. and the, what, you know, and I explained it to him. I was like, listen, that triggers a defensive response from individuals because that's what people do to try and push back photographers. Right. And the, the great thing about New yeah. York is that yeah. once you're filming in New York City, right. it's my legal right to document right. your filming. Right. But you can't act like, well, the movie's going to suck because Soul was there taking pictures and blocking the eye line. Listen, the actors couldn't concentrate. Like, like you the say, cameraman, yeah. everyone, everyone yeah. on set right. would disrupt you then. 
Right. What makes a, a photographer? Right. What's the difference? Just one more guy. And like you, know, you said, you should, you should be in a zone anyway. You're and, acting. You know. Hey, come on. You, yeah. You're getting paid for it. I get it. If I get paid to shoot and I right. give a bad picture, you right. know, like. Right. But uh, run through the rest of the week for me. I think it's the, what day we left off. We on. left off at Wednesday, and okay. then Thursday was Will Smith, and Friday I just came from. Where did um, you get Will Smith? Smith? Um, he left his hotel and went to uh, Sirius. Ray, Sirius, Ray was and then we went to BET, and, then he went to and BET. Went oh. all those guys oh, that are like, you know, pumping yeah. iron, yeah. trying yeah. to be real aggressive yeah. at BET. You got to get off the street. With, with this is CBS. <laughs> this is BET property. Yeah. Get out of here. You can't stand here. You can't stand here. You can't stand there. You can't do anything. Uh, <laughs> and dressed, dressed in all black, yeah, like yeah. trying to make a statement. And it's funny because I actually work at BET. Yes, I know yes. Them. yes. I yeah. call them the commission. That's uh -huh. it, you know, I, oh, I, I am gonna protect Will Smith and Jane Smith, yeah. maybe I can get a job. Yeah. No, they don't you know, care. Right. They don't you care know, about it, you. You know, I, but like, did you guys get the shot though? At least, yeah. I mean, what was I, it? You know, I mean, I, shot. I, I, you know, they got the shot. When, when yeah. I, I try to avoid con conflict in any way, shape, or form. See, that's how I am. But you see, know. that's for me. My choice was. Again, so I, I did. I shot Will Smith inside BET mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. day, and for me personally, I can't deal with that type of competition with the people. And one of you, I think it was, I forget who said it now. You know, it was only 15 minutes ago, but said sometimes you do just kind of move to a different spot if there's a I, bit of a conflict about you're in my spot listen, on the red I, carpet. That's my approach to it, and my approach to it too was to say, you know, I'm going to create my own world and get my own studio where when I shoot. I don't have to deal with other photographers or people there that I don't want to deal with because I'm not particularly good at dealing with that type of situation of other photographers bogarting my spot or all these security guys. I mean, I admire people who can do it. I think it's a difficult thing to do, but I think you got to figure out what are you able to do. And we have a mutual friend like Terrence Jennings. You know, to me, he's great at that. Like, he knows how to negotiate those situations and to be able to say to people like, dude, you're in my spot and you're going to move right now. I'm not good at it, so I take myself out of it. I don't do that many red carpets and that those situations like you say with the BT security. I want to be like, okay, I'm sorry, not, you know, and not be like, you know, no, I have a right to be here and fight. You know what I'm saying? So, so that's that. But let me bring up a different topic. So I spoke about this a little bit last week, although either one of you, neither one of you guys I weren't here, but I spoke about Creative Live a little bit last week, which is podcast number 15. So I'm not going to repeat a lot of what um, I said about it last week. But are you familiar with Creative Live at all? So no. Okay, let me just tell you what it is for anybody who's listening. It's not familiar with what it is. It is. It's a program that it airs on the internet, and what they do is they get someone who's teaching something um, photographic. Somebody who's teaching a topic in photography, it could be how to run your photography business, it could be how to shoot pets. And they will broadcast for, say, three straight days, six or seven hours per day for free. It's put up there for free. They're giving away great information, and it's people at the top of their game. It's not a matter of, like, those who can't do teach. It's people who know what they're doing who are teaching this information. Once the broadcast is done, you can buy it if you want to have it on your phone or on your computer so you can watch it at your leisure. But the interesting thing about it was this, to me, the last few days were people who aren't, don't work like corporate clients. They're all people who shoot individual people. They're shooting weddings, they're shooting proms, or they're shooting, you know, boudoir for individual women. They're shooting, um, you know, things like this. Whereas the three of us, or at least I know I don't do much of that. And the question I'd put to you first, Sol, is how much work do you do for, I always in my head call them civilians, which is probably a really stupid term, but how much work do you do for like civilians versus corporate? work i i i don't like civilians right so you don't I, really I, shoot well, that. because okay this is this is one of the problems that i have is because people don't understand the value of, of i'm a very right. modest modest person right okay i'm not going to run around and, and tell you how much a, a corporation is paying me by the hour right. and so on and so forth and people don't understand that what i do is an art form and i get paid good for my art form. right so when you want me to you see some of my work and you're like you take good pictures come take my kids birthday party and i'm just like right and you and let me back up a second you do a lot of corporate stuff because i've worked with you a couple of yeah. times where like you're busy and you can't do the gig and then you call me and go hey yeah. can you fill in yeah. or something I, like I, you got some fashion week gig you seem to get like every year yeah, I, it's like five or six seven days what was it like a water it, yeah or I, I used to do uh the avion water for right fashion. but you were there for like the whole day and, and, you know and you know what you know what the funny right. part about that right and see all right 
because there's a lot of things that I wanted to touch on, but my time is short, so I'm going to have to come back. But the funny part is that to sh I flew to D.C. that day. The reason right. why I couldn't do the Fashion Week job was because my McDonald's client, I right. flew to D.C. Right. first thing in the morning, shot an event and flew back that, that evening. Okay, yes. I had a private car waiting for me oh, the entire cool. time I was shooting and all of that stuff. Right. But, like, I don't tell that to people. Right. Okay. I flew to DC just to shoot an event right. while I had a guy pick me up at the airport and right. waited for me. A car service waited right. for me and drove me. And this me has back. always been my take on why I prefer the corporate stuff. I always look at it like they have unlimited money, meaning like if Sony gives you a gig on Monday, Sony can give you a gig on Tuesday. Their pockets are endless. Whereas, exactly. And the my view has always been, you know, if you know Aunt you know, Aunt Kathy gives you a gig on Monday. Well, she can't give you another gig for six months because you just broke her bank. Or or you next know. year because that gig was a birthday. Right. But, but we're going to talk about more of this stuff when you're not here. But let me just stay on you for a few seconds before we get to this regular people thing. I'll talk about that with Ray more. But um, you have other, a couple of other gigs that are sort of cool that, like, I'm aware of because... We you did like I did another gig with yeah, you one time. There's the, running gig. The, the run ten feet ten. Yeah. I, I women's health and men's health are. are yeah, and it's like mind. these people they run from this Foot Locker, like yeah. they're kind of near Radio City Music Hall, yeah. and then and, they go and, to the Chelsea Piers, which yeah. is a couple miles or something. I guess. Yeah, like, I you know I I might I might need the help again this year, but oh, it's later, good. It's right. later on in the year. I'm 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 waiting to get get that. It, it, this is the thing, and this is something that incorporates all of my photography, like and and I kind of learned this from Ray. Like, I don't want to be famous. Right. I, I want to be, I'm pretty much the photographer that you've seen my work countless times, but you don't know who I am. Right. Like, I don't, I don't want to be famous. But I don't you see, wanna... I feel that we don't have a choice anymore because believe me, there was no one who did not want to be on a stage more than me, really. Like, I mean, so sincerely, like, I, I don't even dance. Like, how many times I've been at a party and somebody's like, you got to dance. And I'm always like, like, what do you care if I'm dancing? Like, if you want to dance, go dance and I'll sit here and I'm fine. But, but I've learned over the years that, A, it's not as difficult as it seems. I mean, I probably have a hundred videos on YouTube now and we're being videoed yeah, that, and we're doing that is audio. True. That is and we're true. just in a time where it's just part of it. Like, everybody's like, literally, your mom's on Facebook now. Like, everybody's on but Facebook and I'm, Twitter. I'm not, and it's, I'm not know, on Facebook. I'm not on Twitter. No, and I'm not on Instagram. I would urge you to reconsider no, it because I'm, there's no mm, reason not to no, do it. It's we, not even we're, we're, a we're, thing we're, anymore. We're, that, I, I will come back to devote an entire podcast on that. We're going to do that because, because I think... Because there's no reason to not be on it now because it's no longer like. But what what are your what's your end goal? The end goal is that you. It's it's. I got to say it kind of quick. Cause I know you're short on time. It's a marketing tool. You, you, it's it's a marketing tool, and it's part of, it's part of just this is the way people communicate in 2013. I, I, so you just don't have a choice I anymore. I agree in, that in it. as individuals as people that we are pushing a service we need to be right in that realm to an effect right but it's kind of like and think about I'm it to, i can have i do i have clients who follow my twitter stream who follow my instagram like they're seeing I, I, what i produce I, listen, and what I, I'm doing i agree and, with you and you one know, of one of my good corporate clients is like you know at least just do instagram and i'm just right. like no. Yeah, again, and it's such a minor thing now I, that we don't, we really don't even have a choice in it. We, I have loyal clients because yeah. I do good work right. for them. I right. grew up that way. Right. But I, you have to, I don't mean to cut you off, but you have to realize too, what's changing now though is that when you reach that superstar level, when you're getting like the 50,000 followers and they're legit, you can actually get gigs because they want you to Twitter it. That becomes but, part of the selling point that you not, Twittering it. You know, there's guys out there like if Chase Jarvis Twitter something, it makes a blip in photography. But that's great for you know, them. But then right. what? But we can all do it, that. You know what? It goes against my. It goes against my defining purpose of being a photographer. Yeah. Because when are you just being the photographer and you're being? Part of the story. Yeah, but you see, this is this is how it always felt for and me. Hold too. on, hold yes. on, hold on. Right. That's what you got photo agencies for. Right. The reason why I am with AP is because if I need to put something out there, it goes on a wire. They service. can do it. Yeah, but again, there are ways that, like, again, I would argue that someone like a Chase Jarvis probably has a better reach than AP but, but, at this point to but, a targeted audience of photographers. But this is the difference. I, I right. don't mess with that target audience. Because right. That targeted audience is civilians. Right. Yeah. That, I don't. Right. I don't. That's I, not your market. And, and I don't mess with civilians. Right. So that's that's right. why 
in my realm for now. I yeah, but, I know eventually you might have to change. Yeah, but, I would say stay I, open to it because again, I never would have thought that. Like, say you look at today, we're using. I, I don't. I don't want. I, I don't want to. But, but I think we've spent probably a grand on gear to do this podcast between the microphones and the, the you know portable recorder and the mixing board and all this stuff. And like, I never would have thought I'd buy that to put me on YouTube and radio, and I do, and I never would have thought that. I would have thought all I ever, everything I ever bought was geared to shoot other people, but it just it, changes Well, I, I'll tell you all. this. If it wasn't you asking me, I wouldn't do this. Right. Well, and that's and cool. We got you here. How so, cool but, is that? So the thing, and I have tons of stuff to stay, and I know I can right. do blogs and all well, that Well, we're going to get you, we're going to have you back, though, because you're yeah. good, so. But, it, it, right. the, you know, what my main thing on all of that is that I don't want to be a story. Right. So that that's my defining. I don't want to be a story. Right. Like, I I'm happy when I'm on the train and someone's going through the weekly and they're looking at my right. shot and they shot. don't know yeah. it's my shot. Yeah. Now, see, I've done the other way. I've seen girls like reading those books. I shot a lot of these urban book covers, all of these like if your girl only knew with these ridiculous titles. And I'll see somebody reading it and I'll go like, you know, I shot that cover, and I know they don't believe me, but I'm like, yeah, I, I shot don't, the cover. No one believes. <laughs> no one believes. Listen. <laughs> yeah. I got Jet Blue. I got right. Rodale. I got. You know, so many McDonald's, right. you know, all of these corporate things. Right. And, and you were shooting Paris Hilton for a while, which sounds pretty cool. And to me. I also, like, I shoot for their Facebook. This right. is the funny part. Right. Most of the stuff that I do is for in house for Facebook and for the right. magazines and stuff like that. But the whole right. thing about it is that, like, I don't want you to know it's me. Right. That, like, I don't, I don't yeah. gain anything from it. I that. would say if it were up to just me. Want the check. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just want the check. There you go. I, I, I just want me, the check. And I, I want them to it, hire me again. I wish it were that way, but I think it changed. So for me, I've had to adjust. I, I, I wish it were stayed that way because I was cool with that. I, I understand that. And I know that that's something that I do have to embrace. Right. But at the end of the day, like, I'm the most known guy that you don't know. Right. There you go. And known, I, I, unknown. I, I like right. that aspect. Right. And that's what the whole Soul Brother was. So, right. And it, it switched when I actually had to use Donald Trailer. I was like, who's Donald Trailer? Yeah, yeah. You know, so it, 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 like, it, it, we'll, I'll come back and we'll do the social good. networking. Well, he's got to work. See, if we get real people on this podcast who have <laughs> things to do better than sitting around talking like me. But, all right, but thank you. We'll have you back. You can just exit and all, all that. Right. Thank Ray you and I are going to continue this conversation about regular people. But thank you for stopping by, man, for real. Seriously um, appreciate that. So, Ray, going back to this topic of regular people, okay? So I'm going to tell you my observation and what I was looking at with Creative Live is, in my mind, like, I never wanted to work what I call regular people, the aunts, the grandmothers, the people like this. My mm -hmm. desire was always just a corporate client because I wanted to get the things published. But I don't know, I was really rethinking it when I was watching Creative Live and I was watching so many people making a lot of money and, like, just doing good work also, working for regular people. So how much of your work comes off regular people as opposed to magazines and photo agencies and companies no, none of my work comes, and none of my paid work comes from that. Right. And, and what's been the reason? Why have, have you avoided that and have you been averse to it? Yeah. I mean, there is, there is, there was stuff that I was doing prior, probably like three years ago. I used to do people's birthday parties sometimes, just, um, clients, families, and just so that I could keep the client. But I don't, I just told them that I didn't want to do it, and they were they would like try to hunt me down. Why we need you? We need you. Right. Uh, we're used to it, but I just don't want to do that. Um, I, I'm gonna do something uh, in a, in two weeks, and maybe I'll like it, or maybe I I won't. What I do when I come to these gigs, I definitely bring the same type of work ethic that I bring to my corporate jobs. And that meaning yeah, that should, I, it's unethical to take the job if you're not going to give it 100. Yeah. So uh, for me, if I chose to do it, like I had a guy who was a really good client, did a bunch of like what I call corporate work for him. And then his grandmother was having like her 97th birthday party. And I took the gig. And I didn't take the gig because I'm like, oh, it's a quick check. Because frankly, it's a lot of work. Because I'll get hired by Universal Records sometimes to shoot somebody like um, doing, you know, grip and grin with a plaque. I mean, you're literally in, you're literally shooting for like seven minutes and you're in the building for 30 minutes. And it's a better check than that guy is going to give you to shoot his grandmother's party where you're going to be shooting endless permutations of like grandma with the daughters and grandma with the sons. But I took the gig because frankly, this is like 10 years ago now though, 
I took the gig because I was honored that he trusted that job to me because I knew it was important to him. It was like her 97th birthday. All these people were coming from out of state. And I appreciated the fact that like he was looking at me like, you are the person that I want to shoot this and I trust you to nail this for me. So I took that gig, but for the most part, it's never been of something of interest to me. But I started to really rethink it in the last um, like week or so. And I think I may start pursuing some of that. I think there are some really good rates to be had in those areas. And I mean, there are people like shooting for the, one of the guys who was on Doug Gordon and he's giving away all of his information. I mean, he's telling you where he buys his prints from that he marks up and sells to the clients. He's telling you where he buys the frames. He's even giving away information to the point that he said he offers two sizes of print only. One is a square and one is a rather extreme rectangle. Now, can you, as a full-time working professional photographer, think of a reason why I would only offer those two sizes and not offer standard 9x12s and 16x20s and 24x30s? No, I don't even mess with prints. I don't know what right. the motivation is there. Here's the reason, and this is what he's telling the entire world on, on essentially on television. He says, I offer those two sizes because they're non-standard and you can't buy a frame for them without doing a lot of work. So that forces the people who get the prints from me to buy the frame from me. Because when they go to buy the print, we go, we can give you a frame because you're going to have a really hard time finding a frame for that extreme panorama we just sold you. And you're going to have a hard time finding like an 11 by 11 square frame. So the point, though, is two things. One, they're giving away all this information, which I'm always fascinated by. And I think it's a beautiful thing. And you have given away a lot of information on this podcast. And so have I. So we're not leeches. We don't just suck up the information. We give it out as well. And I'm proud of that. And I've been doing it longer than anybody. You check my YouTube history. But... It really did get me to thinking about how crazy it is that, like, again, these guys are telling you where they're getting the prints from. They're selling, they're buying prints at, you know, three and four dollars and selling them, you know, five, six, seven, eight hundred dollar prints. I think there's a really good market out there in these regular people. And I think a lot of guys like you and me have always been these, like, you know, magazine shooters. And, you know, we've got like record label clients and stock agencies selling our work. And, we're not really paying attention to these regular people, these women with the boudoir pictures and stuff. But, I mean, again, there's people making $1,200, $1,500, $2,000, $2,500, $3,000 on these sessions. And I'm looking into it. Yeah, I mean, but the people that I, that approach me about doing these, like, sexy photos, right. you know, they're not trying to pony up. Fifty dollars. Well, see, the thing is, with anything, it's always a matter of finding the target market. Because right. the thing is, is that the temptation is you find these, you know, eighteen-year-old girls. They're hot, you know, and then you want to shoot them. They want you to shoot them, whatever. But there's no money there. They're right. not going to pay because they know if you don't shoot them, they used to pay. I used to make a ton of money off those regular girls. You remember when I first got to the studio eight years ago? We had a lot of those girls coming in paying cash. You know, mm. just shooting, and it was a lot of fun, and they got great shots. Everybody was happy, but. Today, it's like those girls know someone else who's going to shoot them. And it's funny to me because I used to shoot a swimsuit magazine in like 2000, 2001 called Black Men, which is still around. And sometimes they call it SSX. And I was one of the first guys to shoot like these like video girls for that magazine. And I did quite a bit of that work. And <clears throat> around 2001, 2002, you could discover a girl. Like, you could go to Wendy's, and then some girl would be, you know, serving you the fries or whatever, and you would just go, like, my God, like, you have a perfect look, and I think you could manage to do this swimsuit magazine I shoot for, and on and on and on, and you'd end up doing it. Nowadays, any girl you run into has already shot. Like, if you went up to that Wendy's girl, and she could be, like, a three. She's not even, like, an eight. She's, like, a three. And she's going to go, oh, yeah, I have a Model Mayhem page. And it's, the pictures could be, not great, but a lot of times they are good. Like good photographers have already shot her because there's so many photographers. So that type of market is just not it. But on the other hand, if you're looking at these like fabulous 50 year old women who are stylish and they're kind of on their second life and you know, they're in yoga and they're in shape and they have money and they're, you know, semi retired or they're like those women. There's money there, and those women are paying three thousand dollars to be photographed. You know, so it's a matter of finding the right market. But it's not that market for that girl on the subway that you walk up to and go, "My God, you're really gorgeous. Why don't you come do a shoot?" No, she's not paying. Not in 2013. But there is a market out there, and like I said, um, it, the other observation that I had from watching um, Doug Gordon in particular was. 
how formulaic his shooting style was. Now you're looking at a guy who is personally, personally shooting 70 weddings a year. 70, now that's a lot. That's every weekend he is booked and half the year he's double booked for the week. His company shoots a thousand a year. They're turning away 300 weddings a year, he says. They're turning down because they're booked. He's got a bunch of guys shooting under him. But <clears throat> the, the thing that was interesting to me was how formulaic it was. So on the Creative Live presentation, he would shoot um, a solo girl and he'd do a certain series of poses with her. Then he would add a guy into the picture and repeat almost essentially the same poses. And then he would have like the guy do the girl poses and the girl do the guy poses. And it was the same poses. And then he would say... See, I'm always doing the same thing. It doesn't matter. Nothing changes. I'm not being affected. I, I know what I'm doing. And then he brought in a wheelchair guy. They were like, well, how do you shoot a guy in a wheelchair? They brought a guy in a wheelchair. He essentially did the same thing. It was like the same poses. And I was kind of mixed on it because part of me was like, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Like, why change it because he's in a wheelchair? Or why change it because she's 18 and she's not 50? Or why change it because it's two women instead of two men? And then part of me was like, you know, maybe you should be changing it. You, you should be adjusting everything you do to the scene. You don't shoot everything the same way. But it, it was like very formulaic. And he's the first to admit it. I'm not saying anything he's not saying because he's saying the guys who shoot under him are trained in his system and they have to shoot the way he shoots and then he hires these people and on and on and on. But the point, though, is just that it's kind of interesting to note that here you have these guys doing almost like a formula style of photography. That they're saying is so formulaic that I can teach you the exact poses you should be doing. But then they turn it around make it $1,000 on a print, $500 on a print. And I think it's a market that guys like you and me and Soul have been completely ignoring. We've been paying no attention to it because we're knocking on Universal Music's door and things like that. And it got me to thinking about possibly uh, pursuing that market. You yeah, know, I mean, I don't know. I... I... Um, unless the money the dries money. dries up with what I'm doing, because right. I get I get really apprehensive about doing those 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 birthday parties and anniversaries and it's especially really weddings. It, it's weddings to me. Weddings I, I would not. Okay, the birthday parties and stuff is totally different. Take that out. This would be something that's more premium. This would be something. The stuff I'm talking about is like. You know, uh, you're shooting a person and their pet. You're shooting someone and her daughter. You're shooting someone a couple. And it's not the wedding thing. I think weddings is like, you got to really be committed to weddings. You can't be partially committed to weddings. And if you don't really care about weddings, I don't think you should be shooting them. Like, I don't care about weddings. I don't think I'm the right guy to be doing weddings. It's not my thing. Mm -hmm. But I think that, again, those other areas, this fabulous and 50 woman, those portraits, there is money there. There really is. And as I said, it's not like... Again, going back to Creative Live, because we spoke about Brooke Shaden's presentation, and like I was blown away. I was like, my mm -hmm. God, like this woman, what she is creating is is stunning. It's so good. But those guys who I'm talking about now that are shooting that fabulous and fifty or shooting that couples, you're not looking at the work going, Oh my God, how do you do it? They're the first ones to say, look, it's a set series of poses, and we just pose them like this. We're shooting for one hour. We're not even dealing with the hair and makeup. Door Gutton, Doug Gordon goes, I'm not into the whole hair and makeup thing. I'm a photographer. That's not my concern. I'm like, wow, really? Really? But that was his thing. But again, he's making a ton of money on that shooting. So I think um, I'm going to give it a little bit of thought, and um, you might give it some thought. you got an amazing studio right here to do a lot of that work in. So... Mm -hmm. The day you get tired of fighting those BT security guys, hmm. it might be the day to um, yeah. give it some thought. It just keep the mind open, which is the same point I was trying to make to Soul Brothers. Just stuff changes, and just mm -hmm. I mean, that's the thing. I, I, what I what I have been doing is like I know you do a lot of test photography, and I, I very rarely do test photography. And the main reason that I don't do test photography is just to line up models. I, I just don't have the. Um, I just. Like you avoid confrontation. I don't know. It's just um, asking models to pose and just I get right. getting the the test models and getting the the, the team together. Now I, the team is hard. I find the models aren't that hard, particularly if you're willing to pay fifty bucks mm -hmm. and you throw an ad on Craigslist, you can get bodies in the studio. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, that you don't have to even have like good pictures to show them. You just go like fifty bucks at the test shoot. We'll give you some pictures before you leave. They'll come out and they'll look pretty good. The team is hard. Like getting the hair and makeup people. 
again, that has gotten harder because more people are shooting and on and on and on. But right. continue. But what I what I did do is the, looking at that creative live and uh, going back to creative live and the process, the workflow of Brooke Shaden and how she was creating images with herself as the model. Yeah, was wasn't like, that fascinating? Yeah, that though? was fascinating. It just uh, it just like a light bulb. It's like okay. Yeah. I can shoot myself and learn and test with these various uh, lighting techniques that right. I that I've been trying to incorporate. And I did it last or two weeks ago before I went on vacation. I was like, okay, I bought a timer and I started doing it. Oh, and you I bought think I'm, that Nikon timer. And then I'm gonna th I, I'm gonna be committed to doing that for the time being, just so I can get my studio game back up um, up right. and running, right. and then just uh, incorporate because what I was I was. Like I've been trying to figure out how to do this um, bokeh and trying to figure out how right. to make everything creamy and just like. Out and of you're focus referring the to the out of focus elements in the mm -hmm. photograph, creating a certain look where something's in focus and other things are out of focus. Mm -hmm. to you say and, and when I was doing that in the studio, I would be using a seventy to two hundred or a three hundred, right. just because because I, that's what I use in the street and that's right. how I get that bokeh. But it, you right. can't do it here because the the space right. is limited. What you have to do, and this is. Do we, we're looking at a tutorial that's just shooting wide open on a 50. Of course. Yeah. And we, and, 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 but it has yeah. to be close. It yeah. has to yeah, be, of course. it has to be like within like two or three feet. Um, the yeah. distance. I didn't really know that because no, I, no. I could have told you, you should have asked me. Yeah. I would have told you. No, that in because two in, <laughs> like with Seoul, I'm at, I'm outside of 300. I'm like, maybe 200 feet away, just like, right. you know, trying to bang it right. out. Right. No, but, but exactly what you're saying, if you're trying to get that, and again, you have a Leica M9 that is in mint, pristine, unused condition, uh -huh. but again, and you actually have the 35 millimeter 1.4. That's the only lens you have for that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I got the 50, uh, 1.8, I think, for that. Whatever. They don't the make 50. a 1.8. They make a 2 and they make a 1.4. Yeah, yeah, but I, if you have the 1.4, that's that's your lens. You're done. Game over. Right. If Sumalux 1.4 on your Leica, is perfect. It's going to put you at the right distance. And when you focus on that eyeball, it's going to be out of focus. And if you tilt the person to the side, if you get one eye in focus, the other one's going to be way out of focus. So that'll give you that super soft, creamy look. That's super simple. And I, I couldn't do that for the life of me. I, I, set, up so a, a, I set up a test shoot trying to recreate a, a, a cover, a magazine cover. And I was just right. like, at, at, with sand on how to do that. Right. With, That's and so all funny. These, See, but, I have this idea for a YouTube show where we do that, where somebody has this idea for a shot, mm -hmm. and then we walk you through, I'll show it, I'm going to be like the photo guru, and I walk you through how to take the photo of your mm -hmm. dreams. And remember, we were going to shoot it like last week, and then I was tired, and I canceled the shoot. Mm -hmm. But that could have been one of the shots. How do you get mm -hmm. that super soft out of focus, and what mm -hmm. makes the shot work? But I think I'm killing that show, because I think I'm going to start pursuing these regular people, so... I think that energy that I would have put to that YouTube show is going to get devoted to this regular people thing for the next six months or so. But well, continue. What else were you trying to do testing-wise? I mean, that, that's basically it. I, um, th that but was the see, main book block is just to, it, to really discover and to uh, basically um, formulize or make concrete these concepts that I've had that I, I right. want to try. And you can't really know know something unless you do it. And you do right. it repeatedly. And you do it repeatedly Absolutely, so that yeah. it's ingrained. Yeah. Right. And um, I know that you, you're you a big proponent of test shoots. You do a lot of test shoots. Yes. And you practice this stuff. And I'm, I'm, I just wanted to ask, what do you gain from doing test shoots? What's the... Um, and, you know, what's your end goal for the test shoots? You know, sometimes I'm not as focused on it as I should be. I think a good way to do the testing would be to have something in mind and say, I'm going to create a fashion book mm -hmm. or I'm going to create a book of like quirky people, a new body of work. I'm going to shoot all quirky people or I'm going to shoot all people under 18 who've accomplished a lot in their life so far. I think there should be a bit of a focus. For me, a lot of times it's not enough focus, but a lot of times what I try to do is fashion because I think it's one of my weaker areas. So I try to bring in a team and then I try to let that team really take a lot of control. I like to get the stylist posing the model. I like to get ideas from the makeup girl on how the makeup should be done. So for me, the goal is to create something bigger than myself because I find that once I create those photos, they become mine and I can recreate them. Right. And if I choose to, I don't need that team to do it anymore because I know I've done it. So it moves my photography up a level, particularly when I'm working with people who bring a different skill set to the table. Like I've worked with you a lot. There's a bunch of times that I'll come up with some 
crazy idea. Let's go make music videos. And you get tremendously supportive. You'll be like, okay, yeah, we can do it. And you'll come out, you'll bring some gear, we'll go out there and we'll work. But you're similar to me in a lot of ways, coming at it somewhat technical, artistic, but technical. It doesn't move me up the same way as just getting people who have no technical knowledge at all. It's just a creative stylist who saw something in a magazine and she wants to create a look similar to that. And I'm going to let her come here and I'm going to let her go crazy. And that moves me up because, again, I'm the one taking that photo and I can take it again without her if I need it to. So that's what the testing does for me is it kind of makes me shoot something different than normal, puts me in a different place, which I think in this kind of job is crucial because things keep changing. Right. So that's what we have to do is keep changing and you know, keep doing something different than we did before because the world just keeps changing. And you never know when the bottom's gonna drop out of anything. Right. You know, of any particular market that we're working, it just dies and then you want another skill to fall back on. Right. You know. But I enjoy the testing. I like shooting when I don't have a boss. I like shooting when there's no outcome. And the main thing I like to do is I make sure I get the shots they want and I get the shots I want. And the last time I was shooting, I was shooting with the stylist, Carmen Lilly, who really just left a few minutes ago. She was getting her copy of the images. And it was funny because she had this idea to shoot something. She called it monochromatic. That was the theme of the shoot. So her concept was that we're going to have these girls, let's say they're wearing an orange dress, then we shoot it on an orange background. And then when we wear the green dresses, we shoot it on a green background, very monochromatic. I was like, yeah, that's cool. And you know what would be cooler? I'm going to put some colored gels on them. And she's looking at me like, what are you talking about? This has nothing to do with my idea. I go, no, let me show you. Let me show you. Because I knew if she saw it, she was going to go, oh, my God, this is great. So I put these red and uh, green gels on the soft boxes, which is extremely difficult because we have no way to do that. I'm taping them. I'm pinning them on. They're falling off. It was a nightmare. But I, I finally get them up. I take the pictures. And she looks at it. And she goes, I don't like it. Could you just shoot it regular? I thought it looked great. So what I did, and fortunately, we have a lot of lights in the studio. I lit it twice. I put, I used the pocket wizards like on one channel and another channel, and I had like a giant a PLM umbrella set up to light it soft. And then on the side were like these two soft boxes on a different pocket wizard channel that had the colored gel. So I would use the Nikon and blast out her shots with a simple soft white light from the PLM umbrella. And then I would take the other, the, the Leica out, change the pocket wizard channel, and start shooting the gel stuff on the Leica that I liked a lot, and I actually shot them both. So I would say the other point about testing is if people are coming out working for free, make sure they get what they want from it too. It should never just be, well, I'm going to get what I want and F everybody else. If they're not getting paid, they should get shots that they appreciate. And you don't have to do it the way I did it. But for me, that worked because I, I had the luxury. Right. We weren't pressed for time. We had all day, and I could do whatever I want. It's my studio. It's I'm testing, and it came out good. And then today, I don't know if you were here, when she said it, she said, Oh, John, she looked at the pictures and she was like, some of these with the colors do look really good. And she pulled some of those in her edit of the work. So I thought that was kind of funny. Right. You know? But one other quick observation, though, about that damn Leica, because there's no camera in the world that I have more of a love-hate relationship with than that camera. So you can't tether it, which can be a little tedious because you take a picture and if you want to check it on the screen, you've got to, you know, remove the bottom plate and take out the card, stick it in the computer and look at it and put the card back in and attach the bottom plate again. And I don't usually mind the bottom plate because normally you only take it off like once a day, but if you're trying to test on the screen, you're taking it off constantly. So I start shooting not realizing that I left the card in the computer. And it's funny because like say on a Nikon, if you don't put a compact flash card in, you can take a picture and see it on a screen, but like in giant red letters, it says demo. The Leica will let you shoot five photographs with no card, and you can review them. You can go back to image four, three, two, one, and you have no idea. There's no indication that there's no card in the camera. So let's say you shoot like 20 pictures, you look at the last three, and you shoot 20 more, and you look at the last three, and you shoot, and none of them or have been captured by the camera. It's the worst design. You can't right. let me shoot with no card and not put demo on it somewhere or something so I understand that I'm not shooting. So one of the looks I didn't get with the Leica because I shot the entire look with no film in the camera, no film card rather, and didn't realize it. And uh, I think that's a really bad design and they shouldn't do that, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and I've never seen any Leica forum, anyone complain about that. They complain about all this other stuff and somebody should point that out all right so um any other topics you want to run through 
No, that's it. Um, you had mentioned uh, there was a guy who was tweeting you out, this um, this really uh, Tyra's photographer, so definitely give him a shout out. What is that? I remember Ty- that. Tyra's photographer who tweeted your, your podcast. What's his name? Oh, that's correct. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, no, give I know exactly what shout- you're referring to. Yes, I, actually, there's two things I wanted to mention. I don't know, we probably get people falling off in listenership as the podcast goes on. I should have done this at the very beginning. But two things, yeah. Matthew Jordan Smith tweeted, like, I really like this podcast. I mean, my God, that is like the coolest thing for me because I love his work and I love his career because he's got the kind of photography career that I would love to have. You know, you're shooting studio, you're shooting celebrities, you're going to cool locations, like you're doing beauty photography. And I have drove from Brooklyn to Unique Photo in Jersey, and I don't like going to Jersey because I always get lost, but I went for one of his presentations there. And normally, I don't go to that many presentations because... It sounds so obnoxious, but I know a lot of stuff that people are going to give in a presentation, so I don't tend to go to a lot of them. And, you know, there's always a hit and miss as if they're good, but I've seen Matthew Jordan Smith speak like 10 times, but I drove all the way to Jersey to hear him talk again because I truly admire him. So to have him be like, I like the podcast, really meant something Mm -hmm. special to me, so I appreciate that. And the other thing I did want to mention, which should have been at the beginning, was Stephen Gomez. He trains at Marcelo. Mm -hmm. He was on the podcast last week as the guest. And he gave me this Leica cup, you know, it's like a cup and it mm-hmm. looks like a Noctilux lens, which mm-hmm. is the 0.95 aperture Leica lens that costs $10,000. And the interesting thing is, is like, you may have seen these thermoses that look like the 24 to 70 Nikon lens or Canon lens. Mm-hmm. I bought one thinking you're supposed to use it as a thermos because it's a thermos that looks like a lens. I'm like, this is so cool. It looks like a lens, but it's a thermos. And then as I started using it, I realized like they don't really want you to use it as a thermos. Like all the little letters are falling off the lens and the lid doesn't close right. Like it's supposed to be some cute thing you just put on your dresser like, ha ha, it's a lens, but it's a thermos. And I don't collect stuff. Like whatever I buy, I want to use it. So I was so disappointed that um, I threw it away. The Nikon wasn't really a thermos. It's a stupid thing on your dresser. So I tossed it out. But the cup he gave me, it's like a real cup. It's like a ceramic cup. That looks like a like a knock deluxe mm-hmm. lens with this like rubber cover, kind of like you get a Dunkin' Donuts that keeps you from spilling your drinking coffee. So I like seriously love the cup. So mm-hmm. I really like want to just thank him for that cup. Mm-hmm. And I wish they would design some of the cameras as good as they designed that cup because the mm-hmm. cup is beautiful. Okay, because mm-hmm. I know I'm going on now, but they just announced this like a mini M, and you probably didn't see it because you don't follow yeah. all this nonsense. But the rumors is that it's a, a little camera similar to the X2. That has a zoom lens that when you zoom opens up to 6.4. Like, uh, what could you take a picture of with a lens that opens to 6.4? It, it's, it's useless. If I gave you a zoom lens that I tell you when you zoom it, it opens to 6.4. I wouldn't touch it. <laughs> what are you going to do with that? From a company that's known for making lenses that open at f2 and 1.4, why would you do this? So they, they clearly have no clue. All they needed to do was make a Fuji XE1. That's all they had to do was make a camera, a Leica M. With an electronic viewfinder, no range finder, come in at like 4500 and forget about it, fly off the shelf. At three times the price of an XE1, it would fly off the shelf. But instead, they want to make a camera to zoom lens that no one can use unless they're shooting on the sun or something. So I don't know. But anyway, let's hope one day they uh, get all that stuff fixed, okay? Yeah, all right. And, and then also, big shout out to Youssef. He's also trains at uh, Marcelo Garcia Academy. He listens to the podcast oh, he does. as well. That's he cool. went uh, across the country listening to us rant and <laughs> oh, rave, geez. and he really liked it. So there are people out there. We get fans all the time. Definitely, yeah. if you enjoy listening, tell your friends. There's a or and also contact us and let us know what you want to talk about because we wanna we want to cover subjects that working photographers, right. aspiring photographers, anything and everything because um, it's all photographer. We're all working. We're all trying to be better. And uh, it's all relevant. So please uh, let us know. That's it. That's right. All right. If you want to find me, go to Instagram. It's John Ricard. J-O-H-N-R-I-C-A-R-D. Ray, where uh-huh. do they find you? Um, you look at this face, and I'm in NYC. I got a bike now. I may have a bigger head because I got the helmet on, and that's where you're going to find me. You're, I'm just going to be working, trying to make money so I can afford new equipment and uh, continue photography. Sounds good, man. All right, thanks for tuning in, guys.